Hey everyone, it's actually the day before my photo shoot, but I figured I would show you guys what my space looks like before I even start to set up. And I can kind of give you an idea of the size of the place. Here is most of the gear I use. Here's one of my speed lights. Along with the Glow Parapop 28 inch softbox which I use quite often when I'm shooting with window light. Most of my lights all have a grid on them, which allows me to control the light in my small space. Otherwise, the light just bounces everywhere. and I lose control of everything. Here you can see a couple LED lights that I have. Here's my two strip boxes that I use most often in behind the model. It gives them that nice little cutout glow from the side. The strobes that I'm using for the actual strip boxes are really old. It's Enterfit, let me see if I can actually see it, Enterfit EXD 400. They're 400 watt seconds. I have a Godox trigger on them, just so I can trigger everything at the same time. Here's one of the gimbals for the cell phone. I have two of them, one of which I'm using right now. My now infamous homemade diffuser. Here's the main light that I use quite often, along with some underwear. So the main light, I quite often use a 48 inch Octobox, which also has a grid on it. The other option that I use sometimes is actually hidden behind here, which is underneath the table. It's the uh, parabolic from Glow, which is quite a bit more deep. And it actually gives a really nice light as well. Uh, indoors, I don't use it so much because of the space that it requires. It's a lot deeper than the other Octobox. And at the same time, you can see a few of the reflectors I use. The curved one being kind of like the eye lighter, but it's not the official eye lighter. Here you can see the paper rolls that I use most often for my backgrounds. They're nine foot rolls. I use the gray one 90% of the time. I set up the red one recently because Valentine's is coming up. But other than that, I pretty much always use the gray one. I just use a gel to change the color or I can completely drop it to black if I need to. And the white one is there for the occasion that I would shoot something more corporate with a white background. The main light that I'm using on the Octobox is a Flashpoint Explorer 400 Pro. It actually has the power pack on it right now instead of the battery pack. Uh, it's really amazing for shooting outdoors. And some of you who've seen my videos, uh, you've probably seen one of these crash into the water not too long ago. So this is a new one, very dry, not wet yet. This is the strobe that I use for the background, just to give it a little Kiss of light, a little bit of color. There's actually a color gel on it and a honeycomb grid. Uh, I'll show you that when I set up. You can see my old beat up camera here. The ring is starting to come off a bit, but oh well. Still works, no harm, no foul. And I use the Sigma 50 quite often when I'm shooting boudoir. So I pan over here. You can actually see a bin full of clothes that I use for my photo shoots because way too often people show up with barely anything. All in Ziploc bags because I couldn't stand going through everything just to find one set of clothing anymore. A little fan that I use to get some wind into the hair. A mirror because it's so much easier to tell the model to look at themselves and instead of trying to explain for 20 minutes that they have a hair out of place. And most importantly, the lightsaber on the wall, which is key to any photo shoot. If you don't have that, you might as well quit now. A lot of you have asked me how I set up my lights. Am I shooting in a dark room? As you can see, it's not dark at all. It's very light because I have a huge window right beside where the background is going to be set up. But that's really not important at all because I shoot at f8, so the room will become completely dark regardless if it's sunny or not. So not a problem at all. I have another sofa bench set up. You can see through the hallway that I shoot quite often. Oh, and some more of my obsession with Star Wars. By now, if you haven't figured it out, well, too bad. If we turn the corner here, 
we end up in my computer setup. Here's my workspace where we touch all my photos. The most important part here, I'll honestly say, is the pen pad that I'm using, which is not huge at all, but it just makes retouching that much easier. You can see some of my photos on the wall. I really like printing photos large. Well, I have them on a phone screen when you can see them this big, right? Let's get back to the space that I showed you before and I'll set up and show you guys what it looks like once the setup is all there. I'm back. So here's the setup. Same space as before. Paper roll is down on the floor. The stand in the middle of it is where I would have the model standing. So you can see the distance between the model and the background will roughly be between eight and 10 feet. The two strip boxes that are pointing right to the back of the model, which both have grids on them, like I said earlier, just to keep the light from spilling everywhere. Up top, you can see the light that I have set up for the background. People often ask me what the power setting is on my strobes, which I often don't reply because of two reasons. Unless you have the exact same strobe as I do, it's not really going to mean much. And also the distance from the background to the strobe or from the strobe to the model is going to change everything anyway, so there's not much point to it. For the sake of letting you know, you can see that the actual setting on this one is at 29 which doesn't really mean much. It goes from 20 to 60, just to give you an idea. So it's pretty low power. The strobes for the strip boxes, same deal, different strobes. So the power setting isn't really gonna tell you much. It's set to 75. It goes from 13 all the way up to 400, if I recall. Yeah. So I use them at 75. Depending on the skin tones, I might vary from 60 to all the way up to 90. 75 is a good guessing point to get my shooting started. But here's the background light that I was speaking of earlier. I'm holding a light up to it so you can see it. So there's a honeycomb grid on it, and I also have a chocolate color, color gel inside of it as well. Many of you will ask me, how do I get my background to look how it is? Is it Photoshop? No, it's just a gray background and I have a chocolate color gel with a light going onto it. So that's why I use gray. I could use a red color gel, a blue color gel, any color I want really. So here's the main light, the 48 inch Octobox with the grid on it. I'm standing where the model would be standing. I don't know if you can tell, but the light is not pointing straight at me. It's actually pointing across just in front of where the model will be standing. I really enjoy having the light just wash softly against the model instead of having it point directly. This part here is what's going to be on the model. Everything else is kind of just washing in front of her, giving it a nice little wrap around of light. Nothing too intense. And as you can see, the light is really not that far from where the model is going to be either. The light fall off is going to be considerable. Here's my white panel that I'll use quite often. But now it's just against the wall. I just grabbed my camera. Many of you ask me, how do I shoot? Do I shoot in a completely black room? And the answer is no. As you can see the setup right now, there's a window right beside the background. Quite a bit of light shining on the whole thing. But I'm gonna take a couple shots here in a second and I'll show you exactly what I mean by it's gonna be black anyway. My camera right now is set up. It's 1 60th of a second F8 ISO 100. So I'm gonna take a test shot with only the background light on. So the one with the color gel onto the gray background. Oh, and by the way, I'm using the uh, Flashpoint remote. Right now I only have the background light on, so basically my D light. Let me take a test shot real quick. As you can see, the photo is black. It's actually not 100% black. There is like a, a beige circle in it, but you probably can't tell 
with all the reflections and light and so on. So if I turn on the two strip boxes, so I'll take one photo with them included in the shots, which would look something like this. Now I'll turn on the main light as well. If I take that same photo of only the background, you're gonna see that it's actually still black. But does it really matter? Right now I have four lights on, this huge window of light coming in, and everything's still gonna be black because I'm at F8, 160 of a second, and ISO 100. The only thing I'm gonna to see tomorrow when I do shoot the model is the light that's landing on her and nothing else. So if I want more color on the background, I can just raise the power on my background light. If I need more light coming to the back of her, the rim lighting, I can just bring up the power of the strip boxes. So everything is independent and I have no light coming in affecting my photo. Even though my space is actually very small, this is where the grids really, really make the difference. If I were to do the same thing without the grids, I would have light bouncing everywhere, especially in this white wall room setup. This is pretty much how I do all my studio work. That's pretty much it for today. I'll be back tomorrow when the model is here to do the photo shoot. The setup is, I'm just gonna leave it here overnight anyway, so it's gonna be exactly the same when I pick up tomorrow. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.